I was a little bit tired. <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, but that doesn't mean I don't feel well. All right, I feel well after Stockholm, of course. But, uh, yeah, so it's... Uh, well, in a sense, it's, uh, it's very nice to, to see that this thing has developed the way it should. And uh, I mean the particle, I don't mean me. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and I think this is really a, a great discovery, and I'm very happy, of course, to have the Nobel Prize. Well, it's trying to change me. I, I, I don't, you know, for the moment, certainly, in a sense, it does. It has such a uh, large spectrum of of people who are interested in in this. That, in a sense, I'm a little bit uh, shocked, but at the same time, I think it's not so bad because it really spread the interest in something that people generally don't show so much interest, which is actually fundamental to science. <laughs> yes, I think it does. The point is this. You could have imagined that when you discovered this particle, call it the scalar boson, or the Higgs boson, or the PEH boson, whatever name. The scalar boson is the physical name. And uh, when you discover this, <coughs> you could have imagined that you would also have discovered in the neighborhood all kind of other particles. Now, some people were unhappy that you didn't that you just found this. I found this is extremely interesting and it's probably the greatest part of the CERN discovery that nothing was around at that level. Because that means that all kinds of theory that have been used in order to replace the simplest theory, which I just sketched here, uh, are essentially not right. In other words, these fields behave at these energies like any elementary particle, call it uh, the electron or call it the quark, but that behaves essentially the same way, except that it is, what I say, scalar, meaning that it spin, a quantum property that describes, if you wish, its rotation around itself that that is zero. This is a particle which does not define any orientation, or axis of rotation or anything. So that means that that particle is at that level elementary, and that is extremely important because not only it closes the, the, the standard model, which is our present understanding of the particle we know, but it also indicates that whatever exists, which we have not yet discovered, is probably much simpler than what would have been if we would have found a lot of particles around, which would mean that this particle here is essentially a composite of a lot of other things, which happily, I think, do not exist. No, there are indications that for the moment it's not yet there. And so I think that's, that's the fundamental question in a sense. Is there or is there not simple symmetry at those level of energy? I think that a further study of the decay of this scalar boson and the, um, and, and the next run of the uh, LHC will give some information which will probably clarify that point. My 
own opinion on that is that before you do the, uh, the 100 kilometer run, it would be very interesting to see what happens at the LHC at large distance because there you would see if there are still, despite the fact that there's nothing around the energy we have seen here, that there are new things. That is, that is one possibility. There's another possibility which is extremely interesting also, that there is none. So I don't want to guess now, and I think it's only the experiment that can tell at that stage, because that essentially is the first arrow which shows us what will happen later. And without this, it's extremely difficult to uh, guess what's going to happen in the one with 100 kilometers.